Okay, maybe you've been able to guess, but I have not come out and said it yet until now, but I am prepping and planning and praying and hoping and wishing <laughs> for a home birth for baby number two. And I'm gonna wait to actually put this video out until I have the baby. I'm going to put it up regardless of what the outcome is, but I haven't really said, any, well, I haven't said that I'm having a home birth. I've kind of wanted to kind of keep that close to my chest. So whatever the outcome is of this birth experience, I'm gonna share this video anyway because I'm planning and prepping for a home birth and I'm hoping that it'll be helpful if you are on the fence or doing the same thing or whatever. And I know birth can be unpredictable and I don't know what the outcome is actually going to be, but that's the plan as of right now. And I'm really hoping that I get to come back and be like, it happened, I did it. It's such a weird line of like believing for something, believing my body can do it and all the things. And then also knowing that birth can be unpredictable, like with my first and just, yeah, we're gonna chat all the things, okay? So yeah, that's the plan and I have all this stuff piled on my table that has been there for weeks now, but I wanna just sit down and talk to you guys all about what has gone into planning for a home birth. I guess I'll just grab all the things and bring them over so I can kind of go through all of that with you. There's a lot of stuff, guys, there's a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, okay. I'm 39 weeks pregnant right now and I definitely feel sensations. They're not lasting long. They're like that like jolting nerve thing that I keep trying to explain and can't. I think there's many contractions. It's just my body doing the thing. But uh, I'm out of breath. But um, I'm definitely, definitely feeling things. And I have been for like a week or two, but they're happening right now keep some of that stuff there because it's like towels and sheets and stuff and I don't need to bring that over. Okay, let's see how comfortable I am sitting here on the floor. I am so excited to talk about this. You have no idea. I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Okay, let's start by talking about how I kind of came to the decision to have a home birth. I'm not gonna get into the full birth story with my first baby girl. Long story short, I had an unplanned induction. I was 40 weeks and a couple days, I think. And basically what happened was they were saying that her cord was probably being compressed because during the non-stress test at my 40 week appointment, her heart rate had a pattern of dipping down. Went to the hospital. They said I had to be induced. I did not want to be, it was a whole thing. Ended up being in triage for like six hours. They said that she looked fine, but I should go through the induction anyway. That's a whole thing. <laughs> So I ended up having a 40 hour labor. I went 36 hours before getting the epidural. From the moment contractions started at the very beginning, they were very intense, one minute apart. So I did not have a break for 36 hours. It was pretty intense. And finally I got to the point where I was like, I cannot go on. I was so exhausted. I was so drained. Four hours later after the epidural, I had her push for like an hour and 15 minutes. And yeah, it was, Pretty crazy. I had an episiotomy, they cut me twice. I was put on oxygen when pushing. Her heart rate was going down, it was scary. It was just like one thing led to another, one intervention led to another, and that's a whole story. So I did a video on that. I did my birth story, I have a birth vlog, so I'll link those below if you guys are interested in learning about the first experience, which may help you understand why I came to this conclusion. My plan for the first was to go all natural and Obviously that did not happen this time. That is again the plan. So here I am knowing and processing over the last couple to a few years, my first experience having a baby, going through the trauma of that and go and just processing everything and just really going through my brain of what do I want the second experience to look like? What do I want this labor and delivery to look like? So I think that was like the first step was just kind of assessing and healing and all of that. And I just came to the conclusion that I wanna have my next baby at home. I know what I can handle. I know my body was made to do this. And that has been a big part of all of this was just trusting that deeply, deeply, deeply. And I'll talk about the resources that I use to kind of get to that place. I was like, okay, let's just go ahead and commit to doing this. And the first thing I had to do was find a home birth midwife. And what made that kind of easier, that decision to not go back to the old practice that I was with, the old midwifery, was that they shut down because the hospital that I had Sage at closed down and the midwifery that I was with, that's where they delivered. So both 
closed down, so I would have had to find a new practice to go to anyway. This time around, one of my really good friends used a midwife for her first, and she was a home birth midwife, and my friend ended up being induced and going to the hospital. Similar story as me, and did not use that midwife, she used her backup doctor and delivered at the hospital, and that was not her plan. So here I am, I'm like, okay, she loved her, she's great, she has such a good reputation, let's just see how it goes. So anyway, long story short, hired her, and I cannot even express how amazing the prenatal care has been this time around. And obviously everyone's gonna have their own opinions and desires for what they want. For me, what I love about my midwife that I have now, so it's just her, she can have an assistant midwife, you know, on call or on deck or whatever is like backup, but it's just her, it's her little practice. All of my appointments have been at her house, in her living room, sitting on her couch. It's just so low key. I've been able to have Sage with me. It's like so family centric. Clark has been to a lot of them too. And it's just been like so chill and laid back. It's very hands off. It's very holistic. It's just the way I personally have wanted to do things. I did have one ultrasound so far. I avoided all blood work and all tests and things like that. Um, I did get one ultrasound for the anatomy scan because I did want that peace of mind and I wanted to find out the gender of the baby and I wanted to not do blood work or genetic testing or anything like that. So did the one ultrasound at 17, almost 18 weeks, found out we're having a girl. I'm also like, okay, are they sure? This baby could come out and maybe it's a boy, I don't know. I th we think it's a girl, <laughs> they, they told us it was a girl. So we've had one ultrasound and seen the baby one time with no other blood work, so we think it's a girl. <laughs> I mean, we have the pictures and everything and they said they were 100% sure, but I feel like there's always room for error, okay? Especially when you don't have confirmation like multiple times within the pregnancy. Anyway, I went to like a one-off place to do that and yeah, it's been really great. And then the last two visits, my midwife has been to the house and it's just so low key and that's just exactly what I wanted. I just personally feel more comfortable not in like the sterile hospital doctor's office environment. Like for me, I just, that makes me feel not safe and stuff. And obviously I'm very grateful for modern medicine when you need it. And if I need it, it's gonna be available and that will be my backup plan, we can talk about that in a second. If I can avoid it, I'm gonna try to avoid it. We have plan A, we have plan B, and we have plan C. So we've gone through the different scenarios. So we have our stuff set in place. We have the hospitals I would go to. We have the whole, we have the whole backup plan. We're not harping on it, but we have it in case it's necessary. And I fully trust her of when that call will need to be made. You know what I mean? So we've talked through all this, so it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel comfortable and that everything is going to be okay. And I keep saying this, and I feel like I have to have the disclaimer, like, but I know things can be unpredictable, like, huh, but I also wanna be positive and not speak and talk on all the things that could go wrong. Obviously things can go wrong, but I don't want to sit here 39 weeks pregnant and harp on those things. That's not gonna benefit me. That's not gonna, that's only gonna instill fear in me. And I don't need that mindset right now. So I'm not being naive. I'm just being wise, I think right now. And I just need to, focus on the positive and what I can control and let go of what I cannot control and just believe I've got this. <laughs> so after hiring my midwife, I hired my doula. It's the same person that I hired with Sage. Poor thing. She had several work days <laughs> with my with my birth. I feel so bad, but she was a trooper. She was amazing and she slept on the floor on a yoga mat with a sheet on her in the hospital. Like she really stuck it out with me and I told her I'm like, "Listen, it's gonna be a shorter work day for you this time around. She's like, oh, I know, I believe it. And she's had a home birth. So having someone who's had a home birth, if I really wanted that connection, and she's really, really great. So I would definitely recommend having a doula because they help you, they help your partner. I just think that it's very beneficial to have that support person along with your midwife or doctor or whatever. And then another thing I've been doing is going to the chiropractor every week. And I know maybe that's, a lot of people are doing that. It's not just related to home birth, but, I've been going every single week from pretty early on and I feel like that has been amazing. And not only just having chiropractic care, but my chiropractor's had three home births. She's very holistic. She's just like, you know when you just like have your people that are just like, yes. Like, so I'm just surrounding myself with people who've had home births, who speak life into it, and just like finding that community within my birth team. That has been so valuable for me during this pregnancy. I have had acupuncture 
done, did I do it once or twice this pregnancy? Can't remember, I did it a little bit earlier on because I was getting migraines and I might do it again next week if I haven't had the baby yet because that is one thing that you can like naturally do to help kind of encourage labor to happen. I don't wanna have like interventions and, and things like that. Like I do not plan on getting any checks to see if I'm dilated. I, I don't plan on doing any sweeps, any membrane sweeps or anything. I really am choosing to do hands off this time, but acupuncture is something that I'd be open to doing if I was past due. Yeah, so if I was past due to like encourage things along in like a natural way, I'm fine doing that, but I don't know if I'll do that, but acupuncture, earlier in pregnancy. How, did I do it once or twice? Maybe twice? I can't remember, I literally can't remember. Another thing I've been doing to prep my body, I guess we're just talking about like body stuff right now. I have had three prenatal massages this pregnancy. That has been something that I've just treated as a luxury and been like, okay, we're gonna cut out this so we can spend money on this because like I've just like really been wanting to invest in my mind and my body this time around. I just had one today actually. And that's gonna be the last one until who knows when, but that has felt amazing. And today he did some of like the pressure points on um, like stimulating and activating the uterus and stuff like that. So before we get into like all the actual physical stuff that you need for a home birth, um, I wanted to talk about some of the resources that I feel like have helped my mind. Kind of went through body stuff, but my mind, the Inamae Guide to Childbirth, I think is what it's called. That book has been so helpful for my mindset for my spirit from my heart. It has really encouraged me during this pregnancy and just truly opened my eyes to so many birth stories and so many positive outcomes. And they, they're all different, so there's so many different takeaways. One of the big things was, because it shares a lot of birth stories in it, one of the things that I think has really helped me was knowing, okay, this is how this person felt during their labor and delivery, or this little thing came up, or that thing came up, which may have looked like a complication or that they couldn't do it or this happened, the pressure was here. So many different scenarios and they all turned out beautifully. So that helps me to normalize different things they may that may come up during labor that otherwise if I didn't read about or hear about would be like, oh no, oh no, is this normal? Am I okay? You know, that kind of thing. Because hearing all the different stories, I'm like, okay, note, if I feel that, like, it's normal, it's supposed to happen, it's okay, I'm fine, I'm not being hurt right now, like, this is working for me, not against me. Having that mindset has helped so much because it just helps to normalize the different things that can come up without making it feel like it's something bad that's happening in your body. You know what I mean? I hope that made sense, but anyway, just surrounding my mind with only positive birth stories because we do not have room in this time for anything negative. Like if someone goes to tell you a negative birth story, and I've probably been like guilty of this in the past, like I don't even know, but I think it's something to like definitely reflect on and be very sensitive to is just hearing someone else's birth story. If it's not positive, like while you're pregnant at least, like you like don't, don't, don't tell it and don't listen to it. Like, and it's not trying to be naive. It's not trying to be ignorant to things. It's just your mind and your spirit are so precious during this time when you're planning to get a human out of your body. It's so important to only let in certain things. Your eyes and ears are the windows to your soul. Like you have to only put in positive stuff because the other stuff is not gonna serve you. It's only gonna create fear. It's only gonna create tension and that creates pain. Also watching a lot of births, I love watching positive birth stories and water births and home births and just all different kinds, but just positive ones. Like just get yourself kind of exposed to it. Yeah, I think that's the word is just exposure to so many different kinds of stories that are positive. For me, just super, super comforting. And it just makes me believe in myself even more. <laughs> this is what she does. What are you doing, silly girl? Okay, I'm not playing right now. I'm trying to talk to the, I'm trying to talk to the people. Here, get your get your bone, get your bone. <laughs> we're not we're not doing that. Hey, we're not doing that right now, okay? Another resource that has been amazing for me is Christian Hypnobirthing. I have the app and there's a bunch of tracks. Here, I can show you. So it's tracks that you can listen to. And I started listening to it maybe around like 32 weeks pregnant or something like that. Made sure I downloaded all of them because I keep my phone on airplane mode at nighttime so I don't have like Wi-Fi up by my head. It's great to have them downloaded anyway because in labor I plan on having my phone on airplane mode but I still wanna be able to listen to these. So this is what it looks like and it's just all these tracks. There's even, a track 
called faith-filled cesarean. So if you're having a C-section, like this is not just for home birth, home and confident breastfeeding, postpartum encouragement. Those are included, but a lot of it is prep. So there's like breathing exercises, early pregnancy, relaxation, gratitude and creative visualization, scriptures, um, positive affirmations. It's a really great resource. I started listening to them at night and falling asleep to them. And the point of doing that is so that when you're hearing this, you're kind of subconsciously relaxing and getting to the place where you can find full deep re relaxation because you're falling asleep. But it's like training your body when you hear it to like get in that space, if that makes any sense. I actually have a call tonight with Tara, who is the creator of Christian Hypnobirthing. And I'm really excited to have a call with her tonight. So that's another resource. So these tracks and everything, I plan on listening to when labor starts and then also the birth course. I have actually not finished the course because I keep falling asleep at night because that's when I do it. But I'm like hearing it subconsciously, but I do want to make sure I go through the whole thing. But that has been so helpful too. I've really liked, it's very digestible and it's it's been really a positive experience so far. So anyway, it's called the Faith-Filled Childbirth Course. So I recommend that. And yeah, so those are kind of all of the resources. I know there's a lot of different birth courses and stuff like that. I didn't wanna get too crazy with it, but, and it costs money and stuff. So having that book, the tracks and that course, I feel like have really got me to like a really good place mentally right before I'm about to have a baby. Okay, as far as all of the stuff, there's been a lot of prep work that has gone into <laughs> this home birth. A lot of things, and my midwife has a whole list. So that's been helpful. I just like go through and like, okay, check, check, check to make sure I have everything. So let me pull that up and go through that. There's a list of all the stuff that she wants me to have. And one of the things is purchasing a home birth kit. So that came with a lot of stuff, but that's gonna be a lot of the stuff that she is using. Okay, so this is everything that was in the home birth kit. So I'll just kind of go through this as quickly as I possibly can. So there's Chuck's pads, more. There's a lot of different kinds of pads. She has her reason for all of these and I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna trust it. But I mean, literally there's just like a ton of pads in here. <laughs> so I don't need to show you like all that. And then it came with like sterilizing stuff. Um, the umbilical cord clamp that came in there, like alcohol prep pads. So all that kind of stuff is in there. I don't even know what this is, some kind of surgical scrub brush. I don't know what that's for, but she does, and that's all that matters. This is to measure the baby's head. Came with this little guy for the baby's nose and mouth. And then more maxi pads, a bunch of gauze. Came with some of like the diapers and stuff, which I've shared all the postpartum stuff that I've already purchased, which that's a whole other thing. So this, so the kit will have some of that, but I did purchase my own stuff because I wanted like organic pads and organic diapers and the sprays and stuff like that. So that stuff is all separate. I did make a postpartum video of all the natural products I'm using. So that's actually aside from everything I'm gonna show you. I'll link that video as well if you wanna go through and watch all that. Kind of forgot, yeah, that's like a whole other piece to all of this is all the postpartum stuff. But this is basically for the actual delivery of the baby. Also came with a little peri bottle, but I have a different one that has a different spout that I like better and this one was supposed to come with a little net you guessed it it's to collect any belongings that come out while you're having a baby it was supposed to come in the birth kit and it didn't or something i might have clicked to not get it or something anyway ordered this on amazon so this is to catch bodily things this is full of all the stuff that my midwife will be using on me oh that kit also came with straws and i was like why did it come with straws but it's the bendy straw so you can be in different positions and stuff like that and the straw is bent. I'm like, actually, they really did think of, they really thought of everything, didn't they? So here's another full basket of stuff. I'll just go through everything that I have in here. Hopefully this doesn't feel like super chaotic of me just like kind of randomly going through all the things, but I have things organized, but it's, I feel like it's hard to make sense of it all until it's all kind of set up, you know, but I'll just show you what I have going on. So like I said, more of the diapers, more of the Chuck's pads, more gauze. I have peroxide, a flashlight. This is miscellaneous. This is just a little massage ball for Clark and my doula to have to massage me if I want that. Oh, and before I go any further, the plan is to have her in water. So I did get one of the birthing pools. It's sitting on the table, but I'll insert a picture here of what it looks like. So the plan is to blow that sucker up and fill it with water. And we'll get into all the different things because there's like the sump pump you need, the hose, and like I'll go through all of that, but hold please. 
I grabbed some honey sticks for energy during labor and delivery. My friend who just had a baby at home, I got to actually go and see it all go down. We have the same midwife, so it was really cool to watch my midwife in action. And at my best friend's birth of her second baby, like it was really special. So that was really cool, but she was talking about, you know, for really quick, easy energy, these honey sticks are really good. And she was like, do not eat a big meal when you're laboring because she threw up and she was like, keep it light, you know, keep hydrated, eat fruit and stuff like that. And because one thing that's gonna be great about being able to have a baby at home is I can eat and drink at the hospital. They will not allow that. I went how many hours without eating or drinking? Literally couldn't even have water. Don't even get me started. I know it's a whole liability thing, so don't come at me, but I wanna be able to have food and water for energy to get through labor and delivery. Speaking of that, I have my wild blueberry juice and apple juice on hand for during labor and also right afterward to replenish my body very quickly. And I'm also gonna be doing, it's in the drawer, but I plan on doing four to six droppers of B12 directly after having the baby. Like the plan is to like have the baby and like be, be putting it in my body. And my midwife also has an herb or something, some kind of tincture of something. She immediately is going to put in my mouth, so. I have some combs ready. I did not use these during labor with Sage, but apparently having combs to hold helps. I'll let you know about these guys, but you're just like putting a lot of pressure, I guess to like put the sensations, the pain somewhere else. <laughs> and then just some random stuff, like I have to have so many of the big black trash bags and then regular kitchen size trash bags. And I have these batteries on hand because these are gonna be used in the sump pump for the pool, which I'll move onto that. All the things you don't think about. And then I have the extension cord if we need it with the pump for the pool. And then also this is the sump pump to get all the stuff out of the pool and the batteries go to that, but I'm not gonna put the batteries in yet because the sump pump, I guess, can act weird if the batteries have been sitting in it for a while. So it's better to like have them put in fresh or whatever. So we have it kind of loose so that we can easily take it off and put them in. But that's something that my midwife will be dealing with because she will clean up everything, get the pool outside and like she handles all the things, which is very nice. Um, this is the tarp that is gonna be going underneath the pool and I plan on doing it actually right here. <laughs> right here is the plan. I have the most space in the house here. I cannot fit in our bedroom. I can't fit anywhere else in our house. There's just, there really isn't room. I would love it to be in our bedroom if I could because it's like, you know, safe place. It's comforting in there, but we don't, we don't have any room to put a pool in there. Maybe I'll end up in the bed having the baby. I don't know. But our room is right next to Sage's room and I don't want to wake her up if I'm, making sounds. So anyway, the plan is to have it here. So I have a huge, big tarp that we'll put down first. This is the mattress prote protector. I did get the organic avocado mattress protector. So my plan with all of that is when I go into labor is to put this on my bed. So right now we have the mattress, a mattress protector, sheets, and then we're gonna keep that the way that it is. Put this vinyl one, as much as I don't wanna use like a vinyl like chemicals and stuff. We're gonna put it on and rip it off quickly. So anyway, I'm gonna put this over the sheets. So everything that we have, I just did all of our bedding. So it's like basically clean. We've been sleeping in it for just a couple nights. So when I go into labor, hopefully soon, this will just go over that and then we'll put more sheets over that one so that when I go to the bed and like get fixed up and all the things we need to easily clean up. We're just gonna like rip that off of the bed and then we'll already have sheets, a mattress protector and, and stuff. Anyway, so over there I have bags of clean sheets ready too. Ones that I don't care if they get messed up and gross and I end up just like throwing them away. So we'll put any of those over these. I think I have two or three sets of sheets um, just on deck in case we need to like go through them quickly that I have in trash bags. So you have to wash everything in really hot water and then protect them by putting them in trash bags until it's go time. So that's all the bedding situation. And then I also have a ton of towels over there. I went through our closet and pulled out towels that I was getting rid of anyway. Not that you have to get rid of everything that you use. The midwife was like, a lot of people use like their beach towels and you end up washing them and they're fine. But I got some that I'm gonna throw away anyway to clear out our space. We've had them for like many years. So I washed all those in really hot water, put those in bags. So if they get ruined, I'm fine throwing them away anyway. And then I did go to Costco and get like the big packs of like the hospitality 
washcloths and towels and I wash those. Put those in bags because I think I have to have like 15 towels, 10 or 15 towels for me and then I think like six for the baby or something like that. It's a lot of towels that you need. So I, I have all those in the trash bags on deck. I have tape over them with it all labeled. So I have the sheets labeled, the towels labeled. So anyone who needs to access that stuff, it's sitting out on the table and everything's labeled. So it should be pretty easy. Oh, I am so out of breath. I'm trying to make this fast and I'm like, <laughs> I can't breathe. And then I did order these organic coconut oil little pouches because in the birth kit, it came with like some kind of lubricant for the baby. I think it might be for like wiping off meconium or something. Cause I do plan on leaving the vernix on the baby for as long as possible. It's like so, so good for their skin. It protects them and it's like, it's like this miracle on their skin. So I want to leave it on the baby as long as possible. But something in there is for that. So I'm like, let me get a more like natural version of that. So I have coconut oil if we need to put that on the baby or what. Whatever the reason is, I don't know, but I got a better backup. And I also ordered this fan, okay? It's a bladeless fan, so we can use this on the strollers and stuff too for the girls eventually, but I thought that it would be really nice to have a fan during labor because I did not do that last time and I feel like that might be kind of nice to do. A little personal fan we can put anywhere. And then I had to get a hose for the pool and I got the 50 foot one so it would go from our living room to the shower. We're gonna hook it on the shower. And then I also got the adapter for it to go onto the shower and everything. And I got a special hose instead of just going to like Lowe's and getting one because this is a drinking water hose. So it doesn't have the chemicals like the other hoses will have at like the other stores. So this is like, it doesn't have the lead and the phthalates and stuff like that in it. There's a website that has like a ton of like the birth stuff. Um, they have like the pools and the, the correct hoses and sprays and postpartum stuff and oh my gosh i forget what it is but i'll put it below but that's where i got this hose from i really wanted the water to be filtered and we have a filter on the shower head so it actually works out really nicely that we're going to use that water and then i also can trust that the hose is not going to contaminate the water from when having the baby okay and then in this basket i have a ton of cameras this is a new camera this is from camp snap and it's a like it's like a disposable camera but it's not disposable it does not have a screen, but you just plug it into your computer or phone or whatever, and you can upload the pictures. It can hold like up to like 2000 pictures, but it acts as a disposable camera and it looks like old school disposable stuff, but it always has memory to it. It's the coolest thing ever. So I have that, I have like an old school digital camera, the little Polaroid instant, whatever you call this thing. I just wanted like different kind of cameras. And I, my doula also is doing photography as well. I forgot to mention that. And then this is just a ton of the curtain lights, the fairy lights. I have all the batteries stored and ready to go. I got all new batteries with a couple extra in there just in case. I really tried to think through as much as possible. So it's, it's been a lot of brain power and thought that's gone into this. So I really, really hope it works out. And then this is the bowl for my placenta. <laughs> I needed either like a glass bowl or silicone bowl or stainless steel bowl to have my placenta in so she can analyze it, all the things. I'm not planning on doing anything with my placenta. We're not gonna bury it. We're not gonna eat it. I've decided we're just gonna say thank you for your service and goodbye. And I did not buy a special bowl. I'm like, I'm not spending money on a special bowl that's gonna be used for like two seconds. So she's like, a mixing bowl will be fine and we'll wash it afterward. And I was like, cool. Okay, I think that's everything. I've probably forgot things. If you have any questions, just ask it below and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, the last thing I would say is just talking about the cost of it. So it is all out of pocket, okay? But it ends up being similar to what we paid for having Sage anyway. I'm just doing it in the way that I want to, so I don't mind. For me, it does feel worth it to do it this way and spend the money out of pocket. However, I can and I will get all of my invoices from everything with the doula, midwife, um, when I got the ultrasound, chiropractic care. I'm planning at some point to collect everything and I can submit it to my insurance and it just is gonna depend on the insurance and we'll see if they honor anything, if they'll put it towards the deductible, if we get any money back, um, if we get re you know if we get reimbursed or anything. So that depends on insurance, but I've been told to do that. So that's gonna be a little bit of work, but I don't plan on getting anything back. So it's kind of unfortunate insurance doesn't cover home birth stuff, but at the end of the day for me, it is worth it. And I hope that it all works out. I keep saying that, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes, but I don't wanna keep lingering on. I hope this was helpful. If this is something you were considering, we can go into so much more depth about certain things and kind of the reasons why and 
into all of that, but I kind of just wanted to give like the basics here. So please reach out if you have any questions and you'll know if this ends up working out for me or not. But regardless, I, this is going to be a little insight to what the prep looks like for a home birth. So, um, pray for me. Okay. <laughs> really, really want this to work out. Let go of control and just see what happens and get my brain and my body ready and my spirit to be ready to have this little babe join us Earthside. I'll post this regardless of the outcome, but I'll post it after I have her because I just want to keep it sacred that that's the plan right now. I don't want any more external pressure, you know? So anyway, that's it. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Again, put any questions you have below. I'd love to chat about it. And we'll obviously we'll talk about this after the fact. I will share my birth story and um, I hope that it's a positive one. Okay. Bye guys.